Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. I am going to do blooms. going to try it using DecoArt pouring medium and high gloss varnish together as my pouring medium. The uh, cell activator would be Australian Floetrol and Amsterdam Titanium White. I've mixed about four parts Australian Floetrol to one part paint. I also have Australian Floetrol mixed with Golden's Carbon Black. So that's in that container. And here's my white in this container. And when it comes to cell activator, you don't have to have much at all. And then for the base of your pour, you just need a house paint with a satin or eggshell semi-gloss finish. I just happen to have a can of PPG uh, satin pure white in a quart. This cool top is uh, something you can snap on and pour out of the spout on quarts. It's in my Amazon link as well as the other products. I will be doing the blooms on five five by five uh, cradled wood panel boards. They're pre-primed with gesso and uh, painted on the sides and everything already. I bought it that way. A little texture to it, which is great. And I've got for my pretty color here, it is um, Amsterdam permanent red purple with a drop or so of quinacridone magenta and some interference um, color art primary elements jasmine mixed in to give it some sparkle. The orange is cadmium orange hue and then I put a little drop of pyrrole orange and a drop of diary light yellow and into that I put gold sparkle to give it some shimmer and then this one is as a yellow deep with a few drops of the diarrhealide yellow and some gold sparkle in there. And I'm going to mix one more color for you. So I've got, these are three ounce cups and probably an ounce and a half and the, these two and maybe an ounce in the yellow. I'm going to make some purple for you. It's probably an ounce and a half of the pouring medium. And I'm not measuring. I'm just going to put a healthy squirt of the gloss varnish into there. I'm going to just use the same stick from the pink. I'm going to put in a pea sized, a little bit bigger than a pea sized area dot of violet by Master's Touch. And the pouring medium makes the color lighter, if you notice that as I'm mixing here. And then I'm going to put interference violet into this one. Get the spoon. Not a bunch, but we'll start with that. And put just a little bit more. Anything with sparkle is better, right? Now, I'm going to take the quinacridone magenta and put one drop into this um, violet color. It's got some shimmer. It's pretty. I'm going to put just a little bit more pouring medium in because it feels a little too wet so I want to thicken it up just a hair because I want all my colors about the same consistency. You want it to kind of pour in a mound but kind of dissipate after that so that looks pretty good. So I'm going to do five little canvases Again, no specific measurements, just about an ounce and a half, depending on how many things you're pouring and how big they are. I'm just pouring small things, so about an ounce or so of pouring medium. 
and then just a healthy squirt of the high gloss varnish into it <clears throat> with the colors which are two paints now if you're using something thin you're going to have to have find a way to thicken it up so that's why i use two paint instead of craft bottle paint i took one of these uh, plastic food covers and put it over the uh, the silver part the bottom is taped off so now i moved it and i've got to make sure i'm level again the bottom is taped off with a grocery bag a plastic grocery bag just to make sure that um, the paint doesn't get all over my cake spinner because it's really smooth and, and it glides nice and I don't want paint getting in the crevices so that's all taped off underneath and then I took two paint sticks just so that when I put something down on here I can kind of use the paint stick to turn it and not have to reach onto the wet paint that's on here and um, I do have these taped off I don't really have them on pins or anything like that so I think it will stay without moving hopefully so again my cell activator is about four parts Australian flow trawl to one part paint and I have the Amsterdam white and golden carbon black I'm gonna start by pouring the white I'm going to just kind of spread it around, but I want a nice mound in the middle. This paint is a little bit on the thinner side. Um, so I did a trial piece or two and they seem to work really well, so hopefully it, it will continue to cooperate with me. I just love this color combination. And I'm just going to show you kind of one way to do it today. I want you to see how it works. And then the only really special thing you have to have is the Australian flow trough. And I got that on eBay. You pay as much for the shipping as you do for the product, but it's well worth it and you don't need a ton of it. I have a liter or two liter and I'm not doing that many blooms, so it will last me a long time. And then I'm going to wait for it to sit a few minutes and I'll fast forward through the waiting part. Make sure your canvas is centered, you'll get a better spin for sure. But that's pretty good just using deco art pouring medium and varnish and um, just the Australian flow trawl. I mixed this black a while back so it's a little on the thicker side but hopefully it'll still work. Always like the black better with the vibrant colors. Because this white is thinner, the paint is going farther when I spin it. So I have to really kind of watch where everything is kind of going here. It's, it's somewhere to begin with uh, the bloom technique. This may not be for everybody. It may not be the exact way that you want your blooms to look as far as the, the typical bloom with the uh, base, 
tinted, uh, untinted base with the colors and that kind of thing. But it's something that some people might have readily in their house. They might have some deco art varnish and pouring medium and want to give it a go. Uh, I, it is, I notice it's spreading pretty quickly. And um, I've got one more that I've already put the white on. And the last one I'm going to switch to Color Place, which is from Walmart, the white. And just try it to see if it reacts any differently. They're definitely spreading as they sit, so I'm not sure if it's the base paint or the mixture, but it's worth experimenting to find out. Okay, I put the Walmart paint down, and it's got some... I didn't have it mixed up very well. It smells good though because it's in an old uh, laundry thing. I put it in there to make it easier to pour. So it smells really good. Notice the color separates on the side a little bit. That just may be that the pouring medium mixture is a little too thin. Not really sure, but I'm assuming that would be what it is. That's usually what happens when you pour on a canvas and your paint mixture is too thin. It kind of thins out on the edges of the canvas. So, like I said, I'm assuming that is why this is happening. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And uh, good luck experimenting with the Shelly Bloom. It's a challenging technique. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye. Okay, so here's the dried. Uh, can these are not canvases. They are wooden cradle board panels. And um, as you can see, the cells continued to expand and stretched out and distorted the the look of the whole piece it just kept on moving and the um the one that had the color art let's see that was jasmine it bled into the white, which is what happens if you use Floetrol. And it did the same thing with the Deco Art pouring medium. It bled into the white and just made it kind of look pink in the background. And um, as you can also see, there is major cracking going on. So it did not work, but I wanted to give it a try. The last one stayed more in the regular shape that it was, you know, wet in. And that was over the Color Place white satin. But as you can see here, it pulled back in. It stretched back in as it dried. Almost as if it, it had a canvas on top and it stretched that canvas in. But there is no canvas. It was just gessoed wood. So it literally pulled in the design, but then again, there's major cracking that happened. And uh, get it in the light here, you can see that cracking that happened. 
And I know that if you put GAC 800 into your white base coat, that often will prevent cracking. But what happens is the surface colors dry quicker than what's underneath and then it causes cracking. So, there is a lesson in... <laughs> there's a lesson in uh, just trying deco art pouring medium with colors over a white base coat. I can tell that the uh, PPG diamond white satin super white satin base coat that part that part dried nice and smooth and you, you can even have a little, see a little bit of a sheen to it but it the together it just did not work with the deco art pouring medium it's it just it was too wet and it just continued to flow and expand so much that you lost your bloom so this is the best result it might would have stayed pretty intact if I had maybe added some GAC 800 to that white base paint and like I said the color art bleeds the primary elements bleeds into anything that's like a flow trawl type of uh, pouring medium it does not like that combination so there's the final results I'll post pictures and thanks for watching my video bye bye